Good morning everyone! So we're going to be doing this really different project whereby we're combining watercolours with gouache and seeing what happens. It's always an experiment, you know, things go wrong. So, as such, I've got my reference image that I've already sent out to you, as you can see here, Jack and Marco, who's incredibly talented, beautiful picture. I've taken the original, which is quite dark, ignore the lines, that's just my printer having fun in games, and create a grayscale for you all as well. So we're going to work with the grayscale for our watercolours, and then we're going to use the gouache on the last layer, which is going to be the really strong dark one, sets up the atmosphere. Now we're doing the watercolours first because they're a little bit more stable. Once they go down on the paper and they dry, they're not going to move around. Where with gouache, it always has a little bit of flexibility and it can create cross contamination, so you do have to be careful. Therefore, because it's all going to be a bit too wet, if we just use normal paper, I've got some 300 GSM watercolour paper that I've done a quick sketch of my reference image on. Okay. Do make sure that you go over it with putty rubber and get rid of any guidelines which I am just about to start seeing and doing while we have a chat. Um, I've used a HB pencil because I do want to actually be able to see the lines quite well while I'm working through this process. It can be easier than using a 2B which will disappear a little bit. I haven't put in all the background, um, if you did it's much better but I just wanted to give you a taster of the technique. So it's a little bit of a simple fashion. I'm going to get some tape in a minute and tape that down because it is going to get a little bit wet. So do tape yours down to a board. Um, for both layers, my table is nice and flat. I am not tilting it because I don't want them to bleed. I just want to control it with my brushes. Therefore, I've got some different brushes here, as you can see. Um, I might even grab some finer brushes if we work up. I've got a big pot next to me. I've got a bit of kitchen roll, which is always handy in case of any mistakes, I can blow it up. And make sure your water pot is staying nice and clean throughout, or you're gonna end up with cross-contamination problems. Now, this is just a monotone project that we're gonna work up on to give you a taste. You can do this completely in colour if you wanted to and I've seen other artists on YouTube do that. It works really well, it's a nice technique but I thought we'll just keep it simple. We won't worry too much about colour mixing, we just build up contrast and create an atmosphere that way. So it's a nicer, easier taster just to get your kind of head in the right spot. So let's get going shall we? Um, I need, first of all, the grayscale image. And I'm going to work the grayscale image in watercolours. So I'm going to put my gouache just up here out the way for a moment. My water down here, so it's nice and comfortable for me to grab. And I can bring my picture down there, so hopefully you can see my palette at the same time. Right, let's grab some tape and get going. Okay. So, 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 she says. Heavy water. We're going to be working light to dark. I've got a little bit of white here. Right, I'm going to grab some white, first of all, and put that out. You're not going to see it really on the palette because the palette's white, so between everything being white, it's pretty invisible to your eye on the camera. It's even pretty invisible with your eye in reality from what I can see, but it gives you the idea. Okay. I'm going to grab some black. Very gentle grey tone, as you can see here. Now I'm generally going to use the white of the paper just as you'd normally do for the highlights. Uh, I'm going to dilute this down with water to get a very pale grey tone to get started off with. I got a little splodge up here to have a look, yeah that's not bad. And then I'm going to start building up her face. Now I'm right handed so um, you may or I may grab a bit of paper just to lean your right hand so you don't make any mess. And I'm going to start on her forehead. So, 
I'm starting to put in a little bit of grey. I've got a soft, a light tone that I want to create on the edge. I'm going to grab some water and just dilute my paint on the edge to give me that softer, lighter tone. Now I need a little bit more grey just above her eyebrow. So I've picked up a little bit of diluted black and I'm working that into that piece of paper. You can see the tone is building up there. I'm going to have a little bit just to tap off some of the paint around the edge. To take off a little bit in there. It's quite subtle with this picture. Uh, you're going to need to go a little bit at a time. Just work down her face. Said leaving that white of the paper for any strong highlights. And generally, you're bleeding in a little bit of a darker tone anywhere you see it.
should be getting something like this. It's very gentle, very sensitive. And then I'm going to grab a bigger brush and do the hair sections. So, darken that. Because my hair section is quite large, it's easier just to go with that bigger brush. Make sure that the face now is dry enough that it's not going to run into this background colour before applying it. Do ensure that your face is dry enough before you do this to make sure that the paint does not run into the background colour that you're applying down. So if you've just painted the face and then you put the background colour, you're going to find that the two will run into each other. Now we need to allow this to dry and then work up a little bit more watercolour just to build that tonal contrast. Then we'll go into the gouache. So grab your hairdryer or if you fancy the easy route, a cup of tea and give it 10 minutes and we'll come back and start up in the next layer of detail. I got some fresh water and I'm going to work up a little bit more. So I take a bit of tissue, so I clean that out. Some more, and let's work up a little bit more contrast in that watercolour layer. So I'm grabbing a little bit of black, a bit of white, just a bit grey cross contamination, but it doesn't matter. See down here, it's a little bit fuzzy in the picture. So take your brush, clean it off, add a little bit of water, and just fuzz out the edges of the hair so they blend into the shadow. some bits of that first layer just poking through uh, give me a few different tonal options as I work the work okay you should be getting something just like this very much a soft toned monotone and a drawing I'm working a little bit of shadow 
the shoulders so I can put down some pigment, use some moss just to move it around, gradually dilute it out into the highlighted areas. to allow this to dry and then we're going to go on with the gouache. Right, so you can see that this is generally now thoroughly dry um, and I am going to get my gouache and do my gouache layer. Now you can work this up to a much higher layer of work with the watercolour, it's completely up to you. Or, you know, you can keep it more, I've kind of gone for a little bit more of a, a softer approach. Put a little bit of white and a little bit of black. Like I said, we're just keeping it simple to get a feel for this. Then, with gouache, remember, the most important thing is that you always add a little bit of water to it. I've turned over my image and I've got the original black and white now, rather than the grayscale. And I'm going to start working up the face just like I did before. So if I dilute a little bit of black and mix it in with a little bit of white. The perk of the gouache is that you can really blend it quite easily. Still work light to dark though. You might want a spare piece of paper just to check the tone you've got. That's quite greyish, isn't it? We can paint that in, and then if I wanted to, I can grab a little bit of water, just like you normally do, to take off the excess water with your fingers, and work that into the tone. Now it's a little bit dark around here, so I pick up a little bit more black. Constantly use a clean brush to work it out. A bit more and work down my face. It's a little bit darker in here.
Okay, and you should end up with something like this. Obviously yours is going to be more polished than mine, but it gives you a basic idea of how you can work the watercolours in collaboration with the gouache and build things up. You can obviously create um, some mid-tone grey, so you can see up here for the hair, if you feel that the white highlight of the paper is a little bit too harsh and you just want to make it a little bit softer. If you put in the gouache and you want to take it out, so for instance, along this nose, I probably want a little bit stronger of a highlight. I can lift some out using my brush. Uh, probably needs to be a little bit drier before I do this, but it gives you an idea. Or I can take some white and dilute it down. Always add water, remember, when you're painting with gouache. And say you want a little bit more stronger of a highlight over here, you can paint it in. You know, if you want some little bits of light on the hair. different directions that they're going, the light hitting it. You, know, you can see some bits just coming down here. The gouache is strong enough to give you those highlights, as you can see. Um, you can up the light on the eye, you could up the light a little bit underneath the eye and make that a little bit softer and lighter. And for instance, I could increase the highlight on the nose as well. Just to give myself a little bit more of a stronger hit of contrast. Yeah. As you can see here. Cheeks, you've got top of the cheek bones. You can play around with getting something that works for you, but it's fairly versatile. This is for adding a highlight around the neck, or you can make it a little bit darker. You know, build it up. The more you build it up, the better it's going to look. For instance, on the shoulder probably take this a little bit more of a darker tone of grey. I can take that water, leave that dark tone out into the highlight. It's a lot more gentle from the watercolour. And build a, a contour that's far smoother. So you should be looking at getting something like this. Hopefully this has helped you explore and think about how you can use different mediums in different ways and build up, lay build up layers even to create really dramatic atmospheric context to your painting. I hope you've had fun and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone.